In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 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 brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us not call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, then to seed for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed in that place where true gladness is found. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working night and day in order not to burden any of you. We proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and so is God. How devoutly and justly and blamelessly we have toward you believers. As you know, we treated each one of you as a father treats his children, exhorting and encouraging you and insisting that you walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly, that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it truly is the word of God which is now at work in you who believe. The word of the Lord. Amen. Our responsorial psalm, you have searched me and you know me, Lord. You have searched me and you know me, Lord. Where can I go from your spirit? From your presence, where can I flee? I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I sink to the netherworld, you are present there. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. <clears throat> I take the wings of... If I take the wings of, of the dawn, if I settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall guide me, and your right hand hold me fast. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. If I say, surely the darkness shall hide me, and the night shall be my light. For you, darkness itself is not dark, and the night shines as the day. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoever keeps the word of Christ, the love of God is truly perfected in him. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. And and with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside but inside are full of dead men's bones and every kind of filth. Even so, on the outside you appear righteous, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and evil doing. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the memorials of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have joined them in shedding the prophets' blood. Thus you bear witness against yourselves that you are the children of those who murdered the prophets. Now fill up what your ancestors measured out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Outside you appear righteous, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and evil doing. The problem with the Pharisees, not all of them, you know, not all Pharisees were bad. Uh, some of them were good. But the problem, as Christ uh, points out um, in the gospel today and the past um, narratives connected with this, was the, the sheer blindness of the Pharisees to the real lives. Remember one of the stories in the gospel about the Pharisee and the publican, they came to the temple to pray and uh, the publican, the tax collector, was considered back then as a public sinner, and no one would 
dare associate themselves with any tax collectors. They were considered as sinners. The publican simply said, sorry. Sorry, Lord, I am a sinner. I'm sorry. And he could not even lift his head to look at the altar, the parable says. But meanwhile, the Pharisees uh, said, Lord, thank you. I am not like that man. You know, I come to church, I pay tithes, I am good, I am nice, I am patient. He is a thief. That tax collector, oh, I know him. I am not like him. Thank you, Lord. I mean, that's true. Other people probably are sinners, thieves, and you know, all the accusations that people would probably uh, thrust against us. Some of them probably are true. But the fact is, the Pharisee failed to see that there was already so much pride and self-righteous in him. And that was the sin that the Pharisee failed to see. And so that blindness in him. And so for a Pharisee to make himself even look better, he would always make sure that everything external are good. Like the Gospel today says, like a whitewashed tomb. So two things that Pharisees usually do. He would always make sure that they appear good outside. All the externals. Like, you know, they're always elaborate. When they pray, they're all elaborate. When they give alms, they would always make sure that people, <clears throat> $100 for charity, thank you very much. They make sure that everything is visible. The way they dress, the way they walk, the way it's always elaborate and intentional. But that was all. And the second is, to make themselves even look better is to make sure that other people look bad. Well, okay, I'm a sinner, but unlike him, I'm a really bad sinner. I mean, okay, I, I tell lies. Oh, but that person, I mean, millions of lies. You know, sometimes I fail to say my morning prayers. Oh, that person, five times a day, doesn't pray. In other words, they make other people look bad. And so I look better. And so that was the Pharisees. Uh, and the Lord said, you know, before God, you know, if we really want to appear good before God, it's not really an, a matter of making people look bad and so we look better. And that we want to present to the Lord what is outside. Because the Lord sees what is inside. And that is the most important thing. When we want to really follow the Lord, observance of the laws of the Lord is not measured by what is seen outside, but really what is in the heart. And so when we talk about Christian discipleship, you know, um, again, externals are not bad. Externals are, are also good. Like, you know, when we pray, uh, we kneel, you know, during the Mass, there are many parts that we do. We stand, we sit, we kneel, um, we raise our hands during the Our Father. Those are externals, and they're important. But if we start doing these things because we want to show off and say, you know, uh, I'm better because look at my hands. You know, they are really measured. They're two feet apart. And back then, uh, really, um, in, in the life of the church, um, probably some of you um, saw that, you know, uh, years ago. When the priest prays, it is measured, you know, the, the length of the distance from one hand to the other. The priest cannot just let us pray. It has to be very precise, like the distance. Those are measured. I get why uh, the Lord would be happy if you know that, oh, this is really two feet. Thank you very much, Lord. Because if I extend longer, the Lord will not listen to my prayers. If it is shorter, the Lord, <clears throat> again, externals. They are good. Sometimes they're necessary. But what really is inside is what matters most. Why do I pray? Why do I raise my hands in a certain way? Does it make me more loving to God and loving to others? Otherwise, we will end up just like the Pharisee. Lord, thank you. I am not like him. I mean, okay, I sin, but my sins are very light. 
Others are just horrible sinners. So today I think the challenge is very, is very simple. <clears throat> and uh, as we always say, the most dangerous Christians really are those who are blinded by their own pride, who feel and think, and it happens to all of us. It happens to me, it happens to all of us, that there are times when we feel, why is it other people are not doing exactly what should be done? Why is it that other people don't come to church and I do? Why is it that, you know, I, I, I you know, help in charity and others don't? Sometimes it happens to us. And so, I, as we say, uh, the worst Christians really are those who are self-righteous and are not able to see that we too are in, the, are in need of the grace of God. We too are in need of God's forgiveness. And so today, that is what, that is what we pray. Um, it is okay to make the outside appear whitewashed, but it's also more important than being whitewashed outside that what is inside is really adorable and pleasing to the eyes of God. So we pray today, Lord, um, help us uh, in our day, daily struggles, as um, St. Augustine would say, uh, Christian life is lifelong convalescence. It's really a constant healing, a constant process of being well, uh, well-being in the process. You know, it doesn't end. We keep better every day. We heal every day. We become better persons every day. Lord, help us, you know, instead of just pointing out at the failures and shortcomings of others, help me realize and see my own shortcomings. You know, uh, because when we face God, um, our goodness uh, does not depend on uh, the worstness of other people. Our goodness depends on the good things that we do. So may the Lord help us. And as we struggle every day, may the Lord help us to really strive to be more loving to God and more loving to others. Let us now lift up our prayers for needs and the needs of the world. We pray for missionaries throughout the world. May the Lord protect them and bless them as they proclaim the gospel to all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for families and communities divided by conflict. May the peace of Christ that sur surpasses all understanding bring them to resolution and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all who suffer from disabilities. May the strength of, God's, of God accompany them in their hardships. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all of us. May the Holy Spirit continue to watch over and guide us and help us walk in a manner worthy of God who calls us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all who have died. May the Lord grant them eternal rest and may perpetual light shine upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, and today we pray in a very special way for Tom O'Sullivan and for the intentions of Patricia Peck for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear and for all of us all gathered here today for ourselves, for those who ask for our prayers, for whom we promise to pray for. We pray for all those who are ill. May the Lord heal them, restore them to full health. Pray for the safety and protection of our families and our loved ones. Pray for all students who are back to school or preparing to uh, go back to school. And for all the intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. O God, whose kingdom is at hand, listen with mercy to the prayers of your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of the creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our daily life. Blessed Blessed God. God. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good and good. O Lord, who gained for yourself the people by adoption, with the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift them up with the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as we joy, we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out in them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he decided to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, with his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they will be gathered into the one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among you, saints in the halls of heaven, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness 
the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At a Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from the evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with you, and let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes over the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and grace lay perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, a Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto thee, O oh Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer them. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, have a beautiful day to everyone.